Hi everyone. In this video, we will discuss the basics of motion from class 9 CBC syllabus. More particularly, we will see the distance and displacement. So, without any delay, let's start the chapter motion. So, let's take one example. This is position A where the ball is kept. And now the ball is moved from position A to the next position B. Right? So, we can say A is the initial position of the ball and B is the final position of the ball. So, what we can conclude here? We conclude here the position of the ball is changed from initial position A to the final position B. So, this is the actual path traveled by the ball from A to B. So, let's say obviously this object ball is initially at rest and meanwhile from A to B it is in motion and again at B it is at a rest. So what we can conclude here ball is changing the position so we can say ball is in motion. So we can say that change in the position of an object is called as motion. Now let's take one another example to describe the motion. So as you can observe on the screen one car is there. So we can say this is the initial position of the car. Let's say give it a name it is A. So A is the initial position of the car. From A car is moving to the position B that means it is continuously changing its position from A to B. So we can say car is in motion from A to B. Now let's take some of the numerical values. So let's take uh, the distance between A and B is 20 meter. Now if we, if we introduce one another point C, now we can say that uh, the point B is at 10 meter distance from the point C. So in this example what we can conclude when we talk about the position of B with respect to A then only we can say B is at 20 meter from point A. When we introduce, when we consider any another point C here, then we can say that point B is at 10 meter distance from point C. Which means that motion is a relative concept. So position of the object is relative with respect to some fixed reference point. When we say the car is at position B from position A, then what we can say now? We can say the car is 20 meter from the position A. Right? But when we say car is at 10 meter, that means we are assuming the initial position as C. That means we need some kind of reference point to define the position of the object. Right? So what we can introduce here? We can introduce the concept of origin. That means one reference point from which we are describing the position of the object. So we can define the point considered to describe the position of an object is nothing but the reference point or origin. Or in other words we can say the assumed reference point with respect to which the position of any object is explained. In the same example, when you say point B is at 20 meter distance from point A, right? So A is our origin. With respect to A, we are describing the position of B. When we are assuming point C as a reference point, we are saying 10 meter distance is between B and C by considering C as a origin. I hope the reference point or origin is clear. By the help of reference point or origin, we can explain that motion is a relative concept. Now let's see some another quantities. So this is just the revision. In the previous classes you might have uh, studied the types of the motions. Right? We will get a quick review of the types of the motions. So the first type very basic which is a translatory motion. Translatory motion means what? All the parts of the object are in uniform motion. Aisa to kabhi hua nahi ki hath aage gaya, body pichhe hi rahe gaye. 
right that means every point on a moving body are in uniform motion so for example there are two types of the translatory motions one is linear that means any object is moving along a straight line path and curvilinear motion in which we can say one object is taking a curve along a curved road so the examples are on the screen the next type of motion you discussed in the previous classes is that of circular motion in circular motion object is moving along the circumference of the circle that means it is moving in a circular path that type of the motion is circular motion so we can say motion in which object is moving along the circumference of the circle that is circular motion the examples are motion of merry go round or we can say motion of planets around the sun or we can say the motion of electrons around the nucleus next type of the motion is oscillatory or vibratory motion in which object is performing different types of oscillations or different type of vibrations so we can say motion about the main position so either object can move to and fro or object can move up and down about the main position that type of motion can be included here in the oscillatory or vibratory motion so motion of a swing or pendulum is example of oscillatory or vibratory motion so what is mean by periodic motion the word period itself suggests us that there must be some repetition of the motion so motion repeats in equal intervals of time then that type of the motion is what periodic motion so as you can see on the screen the examples of periodic motions are very basics that we can observe on day to day basis the motion of hands of a clock or the motion of planets around the sun that is also the examples of periodic motion now elaborate Uh, we will elaborate the concept of distance and displacement by considering the previous example so let's say again the ball is at initial position a and a ball is moving let's say now the position is b again from b to c it is moving and finally from c to d so in this particular type of motion where the ball is started its position uh, motion from position a then b from from b to c and from c to d so what we can conclude here we can conclude here that initial position of the object is a and final position of the object is what b and b and c are the intermediary points so a is initial and b uh, d is final so this is the actual path traveled by the ball during its motion from a to d why are taking the paths b and c so we can say whatever may be the shortest distance is between initial and final position that is our what displacement so here as you can say ad is the displacement right so shortest distance between initial and final points or final positions that is known as displacement so in the figure you can observe ad is a what our ad is our displacement and the actual path followed by the ball is what a b c d so we can define the distance now the actual path followed by the object during its motion is known as what distance and it is measured in meter whereas the displacement is what it is the shortest distance between initial and final position of the object during the motion so here also the si unit is what meter so let's take same example where car is at initial position a and now it is moving to the position b again it continues its motion and now it is at c now it is at d and again it goes to the point b right so this is the complete motion so car is started from a then it goes to the b then to the c then to the d and finally now it is at b so as you can observe car started the position from a and now it is at b so at a it is at in the rest and now in the b point it is in the also rest that means what we can say this is initial position of the car and this is the final position of the car 
so as you can observe the first arrow from a to d and from again d to b represents total path or actual path traveled by the object so what is the actual path here a b c d c b this is the actual path and we know actual path followed by the object during its motion is nothing but the distance so distance in this case will be what a b plus b c plus c d plus d b this is our distance and what is displacement displacement is the shortest distance between initial and final point and as you can observe in the figure or on the, on the slide a b is our displacement let's take some of the numerical values let's assume uh, the distance between a and b is 50 meter from b to c it is 40 meter and from c to d it is 70 meter so here if you observe the distance is what distance is 270 meter because a to b is 50 b to c is 40 c to d is 70 and from d to b 40 plus 70 it will be what 110 and as you can see displacement is only what 50 meter so in this way we can find the distance and displacement provided we must know the initial and final position of the object now let's move further and let's uh, differentiate between distance and displacement so the first point obviously the definition the actual path followed by the object during its motion is nothing but the distance whereas the shortest distance between initial and final position is known as displacement SI unit of distance is meter whereas the SI unit of displacement is also meter it is a scalar quantity and it is a vector quantity you know scalar quantity means the quantities which can be easily described by the magnitude only magnitude means its numerical value when we say 10 kg so 10 is the magnitude but in case of some quantities there must be direction also specified so the quantities which can be described with the help of magnitude as well as direction that quantities are called as what vector quantities so our displacement velocity acceleration are the vector quantities whereas the scalar quantities are like length mass time distance etc are the scalar quantities the next point can be it can be zero but cannot be negative distance can be zero when it will be zero obviously when there is no movement of the object that means object is at the same position then it will be a zero distance and here as the displacement is negative positive as well as zero so distance is equal to speed into time and the displacement is equal to velocity into time these are the basic formulas here one point must be included that distance cannot be less than the displacement it can be equal to the displacement right so uh, let's see some of the questions the first question is on the screen from the textbook of NCRT which is in text question so an object has moved through a distance uh, and the question is can it have a zero displacement if yes support your answer you know when it will be zero displacement come to the basic definition of the displacement and displacement is what it is what it is simply shortest distance between initial and final point so if any object is at the same position after covering some distance for example in case of a circular motion we can say object covered one round so there must be some kind of distance but a displacement is zero because object returned back to its original position so we can say here yes there though there is some distance covered by the object the displacement will can be zero where it can be zero for example if a car moves from a to b and again back to the point a then there must be some distance covered by it but displacement is what zero you can also write the example of what circular motion let's take one another example a farmer moves along the boundary of a square field of side 10 meter in 40 seconds what will be the magnitude of a displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minutes 20 seconds from its initial position sorry from his initial position so as you can see the square field 
is given and its dimension is also given so square that means all sides are equal and the side is given 10 meter so the given data is side of a square field which is 10 meter uh, total time is given which is 2 minute 20 second that means it is 140 second right so total boundary is nothing but what it is the sum of all sides as you can observe in the slide uh, let's say ABCD is a square field and each of side is, uh, the side is 20, 10 meter obviously it is square so all sides are equal so if any person or farmer is to move along the boundary that means it needs to cover the perimeter of a square so the total boundary distance or the total perimeter of the square field will be 40 meter and it is given that the whole boundary is covered by that farmer in how much time in 40 seconds right so farmer covers 40 meter distance in 40 seconds that means we can say total time is given 140 seconds so it must be that the total distance covered is how much 140 meter right so in 140 second the farmer will cover 140 meter distance so let us assume that the starting position of the farmer is a and by covering this whole uh, 140 meter distance obviously it will be at point c right because 40 into 3 it will be 120 so at the end of 120 second the farmer must have completed three rounds but we have total time 140 seconds so 20 seconds greater than the 120 that means there will be three and a half rounds and if he is he has started from point a now he will be at point c and in the question it is asked find the magnitude of displacement that means we need to find the displacement from point a to the point c right so here we need to use the pythagoras theorem so let's say the displacement we need to find ac and uh, by pythagoras theorem we can write ac square as you can observe in the figure this is diagonal ac so ac square is equal to simply ab square plus bc square and we know that ab is 10 and bc is 10 so ac is equal to the square root of 10 square plus 10 square which is nothing but the 10 root 2 so this ac displacement is nothing but what 10 root 2 meter so we can say that displacement covered by the farmer at the end of 140 seconds or 2 minute 20 seconds is how much it is 10 root 2 meter now let's see the third question which of the following is true for the displacement we have just discussed the distance and displacement so it can be not be zero it can be zero when it will be zero you know that when object return back to its original position and its magnitude is greater than the distance it cannot be possible right distance can be equal to the displacement but cannot be uh, displacement cannot be greater than the distance so both a and b are false statement because displacement can be positive negative or sometimes zero but displacement can be cannot be greater than the distance it will be always smaller or less than the uh, sorry equal to the distance so i hope all the questions about the distance and displacement are cleared right if you still uh, still have a any doubt you can write in the comment box or you can email me okay so i hope the session is useful for you so we will make the next part which is related with the uniform and non-uniform motion so stay tuned for the further videos we will stop here today thanks for watching the video if you like the videos subscribe to the channel and share the videos so thanks everybody